Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. My name is Derek Riley. We are today with the Volkswagen ID Buzz, the passenger version. If you're looking for a cargo version video, that's going to be another separate video on the channel. Um, two-tone with the candy white and the uh, yellow comes in green orange as well uh, this one has the iq headlights led matrix large volkswagen badge uh, there is a frunk and we'll look at that now in a second but you there isn't a frunk is what i'm trying to say with such a short overhang there's not a lot of space to put in here and the really only access the reason you get in here is just to fill up your washer fluid but there is access colors is another thing and i talked about it on my social media there's the solid colors there there's seven available and then in the two-tone there are four colors available let me know in the comments which one you prefer but we've already had a bit of a poll about it and two-tone is definitely winning but you have your sensors in underneath with this kind of mesh at the bottom and your 360 degree cameras. Moving down along the side, you've got that air curtain inlet here. Uh, wheels come in 18s, 19s, 20s and 21s on the passenger. You've got that IQ lights coming down along the side. Large black wing mirrors with the indicators. It's about two meters high, about two meters wide, 4.7 meters long, and a wheelbase of about three meters. This has the pull, uh, the automatic doors on either side, and they can be opened up from the front and also by the passengers. Uh, it's a five-seater. It's a standard chassis length. Um, there is a long wheelbase version coming, and that's the one you're going to get in the US market. Uh, you've got the design lack here, then with the three stripes harking back to the old um, Volkswagen bully, as they call it, with that IQ light. But let's turn the van around. Rear passenger side, you have the charging flap. AC goes up to 11 kilowatts and DC up to 170 kilowatts. On the side, you've got this beautiful IQ light. At the top, you've got the gloss black shark fin aerial. You've got the high level brake light. You've got the uh, wiper, which is great to see. On the IQ version, you have this beautiful side to side or coast to coast light, a super large Volkswagen badge, ID buzz. And then in underneath, you have a power tail lift button. Inside the boot, you have 1,100 litres up to the top of the seats. And then if you put the seats down, that comes up to 2,200 litres. And this one has the optional floor in it so that when you push the seats down, everything is level. Really practical, lots of usability here. So yeah, you've got your likes of your shopping bag hooks, you've got your 12 volt socket. And with this model, we had the um, raised floor option on it with some storage boxes in underneath that you can use. This just makes it a flat floor. Also, uh, you have the tow bar button, so you can click the button on the side and you can use your foot, or as I did with today, it was a nice clean van, I was able to use my hand, and you use your foot then to kick it back underneath again. Also, there are a lot of talk about people wanting to camp in this, and there is a camping module available a foam mattress on the top with a pull-out cooker and water holder, etc. Let's have a look on the inside. So what's it like inside the ID Buzz, specifically the passenger version? Lots of colour going on here. You don't have to have as much colour. Some of them are they have plainer seats, but on the door, you've got your locking, unlocking and your windows. Only windows that work in this uh, ID Buzz is the front windows, the back windows do not open. You've got your steering wheel, very similar to the rest of the ID family, but the difference is the stalk is slightly different on this. It's not attached to the binnacle uh, that's on the reach and rake steering wheel. Over my left knee, you've got your lighting system. Again, you can stick it on auto. Lots of dash, lots of spot pockets, and etc. You've got your charging pockets down here. There's USB ports all over the place. 12 inch screen with your touch sensor on for volume, etc. Some people aren't a fan, same as the touch on the steering wheel, but you get over it. Your vents, and you've got some really nice storage. Your cup holders, you've got the ability to open and close the doors at the back. You've got the center island that's removable as well if you don't want it, but it locks into place there as well. You've got some nice rubberized shelves over here and some storage areas. And there's two-tone seats. These ones are the top trim, so you've got the electronically adjusted with massage function, and you have the ability to give you better tie support. Both seats in the front have armrests, two armrests, like the traditional bully. But overall, lots of space, great visibility. We're gonna have a seat in the back and have a look to see what's like there. 
what's it like in the back of the VW ID Buzz? Lots of space back here. This seat is set for me. I'm 188 centimeters, six foot two. So oodles of space, but there's also 150 millimeters of travel on both the 60 and the 40 split. So if you need less or more space, it's great to have it there. In the back of the seats, you have a device pocket in the top. You've got a table that you can adjust. Um, it also has a magazine holder. What's not back here is um, air vents, etc. but also I can't open the windows. There is some, in the pockets of the doors, there are some USB type C's. So it's a bit compromised. There isn't an armrest back here for uh, cup holders in the middle. So it's a, it's a bit of a funny one, but great space. I'll give it that, but just functionality could be a bit better. So in the back of the ID Buzz, if you want to put the seats flat, you just pull that handle and it folds nice down and flat. And with that false floor, everything has come through. That brings this volume up to 2,200 liters. You've got your Isofix tie-off point in the back, and there's two in the back of the ID Buzz. Probably a missed opportunity with such a large vehicle that they don't have that third one in the middle. A lot of people are looking for three in a row. This video is in partnership with Nevo.ie, Ireland's dedicated EV website. Nevo is on a mission to create a seamless transition to electric driving for everyone. Browse different trim levels and book your test drive of your Volkswagen ID Buzz and much more at Nevo.ie today. Let's take the Buzz out on the road to see what it's like. Suspension wise, and this is not a good road by any means with that McPherson strut with the uh, coil dampeners and then the multi link in the rear. Uh, it's a lovely smooth ride with regards to what, uh, with the weight of the actual vehicle. So they're doing a nice job of that. Because there's going to be families that are going to be using this. It's not going to be a racetrack driving. So it's a 150 kilowatt electric motor on the rear axle. Uh, there is an all-wheel drive coming next year, we're told, in 2023. That gives you 204 PS, 310 newton meters of torque. Visibility-wise, it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. It is a large windscreen. It has uh, quarter panels so that the A pillar is really narrow as Johnny Smith likes to call it the killer pillar um, and then just visibility all around is amazing really quiet as well and I was looking at the to see if the glass was a double glazing and it wasn't double glazed um, so here in Copenhagen uh, so there's a press drive going on over a number of weeks. I think it's a global event, so there's people coming from all over the place and we're all embargoed. Top speed is 145 kilometers an hour and a zero to 100 in 10.2 seconds. It's not the fastest, but it is nearly two and a half ton. Uh, battery in this one is a standard wheelbase with a 77 kilowatt hour battery. There is a larger one coming to the United States and that's 77 kilowatt hour usable. Lots of practicality here as well with lots of cubby holes. There's a really good one in front of my left knee with two USB type Cs. There's also the option of putting a camera up here uh, we talked about the charging speed already and zero to 100% on an 11 kilowatt charger is about seven and a half hours. I can only assume that would increase with a seven kilowatt hour charger, probably around the 10 hours, 10, 11 hours. And charging time on the DC from 5% to 80%, if you can get it at 170 kilowatt, will take only 30 minutes. And I like the fact that they've moved it because it's a bit deeper than the ID3, ID4, ID5. The, the space between the binnacle and the steering wheel is just that bit too far. So you can drive now, there's little notches in the back. And so the ability to change what drive mode you're in, and put it into B mode. So it's two stage regen. There isn't one pedal driving like all the Volkswagen models. Um, D is adaptive and B is high regen, but it's not one pedal. It's got that 10 inch screen on some models. Not a fan of the haptic feedback buttons, touch buttons on the steering wheel, um, but it is what it is. They've, they've scaled economies there, so they're buying thousands and thousands of buttons for steering wheels. So um, it is it is what it's what it's doing, what it's supposed to do. Energy consumption, it's saying WLTP of between 20.5 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers to 21.7. Uh, it's slightly higher on the cargo version, but that's on a separate video. And WLTP is between 400 and 423. I really like the double armrest. Real captain's chair feel to it. So smooth, really smooth. And really quiet. Like you can't hear a peep. Yeah, it's an amazing driving position. It's a big car though, it's 4.7 meters long and that 2.4 ton, nearly 2.5 ton. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an unwieldy beast but so easy to drive. Steering is a nice weight, it's a good size steering wheel as well. Seats are nice and comfortable. 
you've got that leg support, thigh support, the adjustability on it. I like the two-tone colors. Something different and it brightens it up and it's got a nice wood effect here on the dash as well. I'm not sure if that's on all trims. But yeah, it's super practical and compared to get to a, a traditional SUV, like I think they're going to sell a few of these. They're expensive, don't get me wrong, but there is a definitely, like a large SUV is not cheap. So it's the decision of whether you do uh, SUV or whether you do multivan, MPV style like this with a maximize, the, to maximize the use of, utilize it, to utilize the maximum space. Early start this morning. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking about going for the ID Buzz, if it's something that's on your list. Have you ordered one already? I believe that the Star Wars advertising has uh, helped with kids badgering their parents to buy the Star Wars van and uh, dealers are getting phone calls left, right and centre from parents saying, my kid wants the Star Wars van, uh, can you help me sort it out? I put a poll up on social media and on the YouTube channel community tab in relation to two-tone or solid colour. Definitely in the yellows or the greens or the oranges, the two-tone seems to be winning, but a couple of people are really liking the black, solid black passenger version. So I think it's definitely dependent on the colour, whether it works for two-tone or not, and have that candy white element to it as well. About 2,471 kgs unladen and permissible weight then is 3,000 kg. So a maximum payload in here of 529 between people and cargo. Roof load, you get uh, 100 kgs. Uh, maximum towing is 1,000 kgs. I'm not sure if this is a first edition, but it has the play, pause, up pedals on it. So I don't know what trim and what spec. It doesn't have first on the, on the steering wheel, so maybe they're all coming with those play, pause buttons. Visibility, yeah, throttle response, but like the ID5s, ID4s, like they're getting better and better. And with that over the air update, with that 3.2 software that's coming straight out of the factory in Hanover, and these are going to be all made in Hanover for the European market, I presume, maybe even the global market. Um, the voice recognition is supposed to be better. Satellite navigation built in is supposed to be better in the sense of it knows where the de final destination is and it's going to stop the charge rather than putting a big long charge into your the last charge it's going to give you just enough to get you home um and so rather than spending uh, extra time at a charger now five temp like if you can get a 170 kilowatt hour charger um it's going to take you 30 minutes so to, to fill that up what i like is also that Vol volkswagen are rolling out that um, ISO standard that plug and charge standard so via their payment method which is we charge you'll be able to literally pull up to a charger and plug it in and it like a Tesla system it knows the car through the, the once it's plugged in it's going to know who you are how to charge it and it's not going to look for an app authentication authentication authorization even better and it is also going to um just charge so it's plug and charge is the standard and i know with this video sponsors nevo and nevo charging and uh, getting into that public charging space all of the charging hardware that they're looking at is going to have that um capability so in the not too distant future if you're driving a volkswagen id um and the fact that, that you could pull up to a nevo charging charger and just pull in they're going to be all top to pay anyway um, so yeah, it's, it's the usability of charging and the right to charge like we talk about with the Irish EV Owners Association. So the charging speeds are getting better. A bit disappointed with regards to the no windows in the rear, no air con, no vents in the rear, which is a bit of a funny one. Um, surprised at them to be quite honest, but with a sliding door it's, it's difficult. I can imagine, but you think they'll be able to put uh, vents in the B pillars? There is charging on the door, I suppose. Front is three millimeters wider. The tires are slightly na narrower, uh, and with that, because of the there's no electric motor up the front, the um, the arch and the area for the wheel to take a turn, the wheel arch, um, is actually really wide. So the 
turning circle on the ID Buzz is just around 11 meters, which is similar to a Volkswagen Golf. Brakes on the ID Buzz, like other Volkswagen Group models, it's disc brakes on the front and drum brakes on the rear, and they have stuck with that, whether it's a Audi Q4 e-tron, Cooper Bourne, it's just across the Volkswagen Group, they are not putting um, disc brakes on the rear at the moment. So with the all-wheel drive coming next year, obviously you're going to have an increase in power and uh, the longer wheelbase, and you're also going to have a bigger battery potentially in some markets, such as the United States. With that longer wheelbase, it's going to afford you the third row of seats and hopefully another two isofix, bringing it from two to four, all going well, and that's 2024. And then you're going to have the ability to um, the Volkswagen ID Buzz California camper van is going to be um, coming in 2025. But overall, it's great. It's getting a lot of attention. Range isn't huge, between 400 and 450. Let me have a look at energy consumption to see if we can get something. Um, vehicle charging. Are we on charging? So I'm at 91% and 404 kilometers worth of, but it's all been city driving, so it has been, um, there's battery care mode, there's bi-directional charging coming down the line as well, um, which is good to see. And Volkswagen aren't gonna let others take the victory on that. And you've got that ID light system as well. Um, so I've got a separate video on my channel if you're interested in understanding what the different lights are and what they're doing. That was for 3.1. I'm not sure with 3.2 has there been any addition to the ID light. Um, you also have the ability for um, Park Assist Plus with memory function, which they're making a big deal out of it. I did a live demo video on my channel as well. So there's a lot of ID content on the channel if you're interested in this kind of thing. But what I'm looking for is the data. Um, so I am getting 23.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So yeah, it's, and that's, this has been on a press trip. So your people haven't been looking after it. Um, you probably be floating in around that 20 because it's such a large vehicle. Drag coefficient of 0 0.29 nice window wipers uh, both sides uh, so they don't have to worry about the markets as well what side the, the window wiper is opened on hopefully you've enjoyed my review of the id buzz great to get hands-on great to get first drive and uh, we're obviously on a drive in the channel to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022 so if you haven't already subscribed please do so remember if you think an ev is for you leave it to me and i'll review thank you very much for watching